Welcome to the Pick Vault. I'm Matt Taylor alongside Danny Sivan. It's Thursday, which means Thursday Night Football is a matchup between the 5-3 and three Indianapolis Colts, led by Phillip Rivers, as they go and they take on the Tennessee Titans. Obviously, Derrick Henry having a year, and his team is 6-2. and two. So those two teams going head-to-head tonight. Keep listening. We're giving you guys exclusive content here from the Pick Vault. Picks, projection, and player props coming your way right now. Get ready. This is the Pick Vault. Welcome to the Pick Vault. Taking sports gambling to the next level. No more winging it. It's time to get paid. We're a sports gambling consultation firm. We use sports, news, sports data, stats, and analytics. And we help you unlock your money. Get ready to start winning. This is the Pick Vault. And here's Matt Taylor and Danny Siv. It's the Pick Vault. Gonna sit you down and listen to this real talk. Ain't no first or second option. It's the default. Turning picks into these dollars. Gonna let them fall. Raining down these daily winnings like an aerosol. Analytics calculated just to win it all. Problems when it comes to choosing, we got all them solved. Got the picks that need and fixed, and you know who to call. Cause this the, cause this the, cause this the pick vault. And he is right. That's Jay Alive Official. Go check him out on Apple Music, Spotify, and right here on Instagram. He actually has new music coming out every single day this week. So go check him out at Jay Alive Official. Now, Danny, welcome back to the studio. And again, Pick Vault Nation, I know we've been a little bit of a hiatus here. Again, working on the application. Big news coming very shortly, very, very shortly. Um, especially for all you guys that are Black Friday, Cyber Monday, sh- you know, shoppers, get ready. We have a big news, uh, big news coming your way about the pick vault. So, Dan, let's talk. Obviously, we could talk a lot about everything that's going on, not only in the sports world, of course. But let's talk specifically for Pick Vault Nation about these two teams that are going to go head to head tonight on Thursday Night Football: the Colts and the Titans. Now, my opinion, right off the top of the bat, hearing about the Colts and the Titans before even going into this game, right when you hear about these two teams facing on primetime football, my thought process early on in the year was this was going to be a very interesting ball game because you have Derrick Henry uh, on the, ten, the the Titans, but you also have Phillip Rivers coming into an organization that going from last year had a lot of success with Brissett at the quarterback position. And all of a sudden, you get a guy that has a lot of experience um, and frankly, that could really move the ball down the field and has shown it on a consistent basis year in and year out. He brings it every single week. And the attitude he brings to an organization and a roster and a, and a locker room and help building a culture, this guy, Philip Rivers, we knew was going to be the storyline. And, and, and what I want to say now is we were right. I mean, I, everything I just said is still the storyline. Still on the as table. As we head it. into this game, I didn't know if both these teams would be as successful as they are. Yeah. And, and frankly, this Colts team is a 5-3 and three team that, again, hasn't been able to get all the pieces to click 100%. They're playing great football, and they're not even clicking at their right. best. Yeah, right? Was, the Titans, on the other hand, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to you second. Yeah, no, you're, good, you're good. The Titans, on the other hand, maybe are overachieving. Again, coming off of last season, what they did not only to get as deep as they did in the playoffs and take down a Patriots team and all of a sudden get to where they did, eventually losing to the Chiefs. But this team, right? is doing kind of the similar thing this year. And I don't know if it's the, you know coaching. I don't know if it's the quarterback position. Obviously, a new guy back there in, in Tannehill coming back off his injuries from last season to this season. But we really got to talk about the fact that this team maybe isn't overachieving. Again, I can say overachieving, but look what they did last season, and they're building off it. Six and two start this season, four and one at home yeah. as they host a five and three team tonight. So this really, in my opinion, is a statement win for both these teams. 100%. No matter what happens tonight, somebody is making a legitimate statement to the AFC that you're on notice and we're coming for you again. And we're coming at you, the Chiefs. We're coming at you, the Steelers. We're coming at you again, whoever comes out of the AFC yep. East, whether it's the Dolphins, whether it's um, the Bills, or whether it is the Patriots at the Who end knows, of the day. Right? Whoever it is, this AFC uh, matchup tonight in my opinion, it is a bigger statement for who is not playing tonight. Right. Uh, the Chiefs, the Steelers, the Dolphins. I mean, this game tonight means a lot. So, Dan, break down this matchup. Well, Matt, uh, kind of basically Thursday football. everything you basically said, I am 100% on par with what you're saying. And speaking about the Colts, I mean, you got Phillip Rivers obviously coming into this organization, and he's going to do what he does. He has the experience. I mean, let's not 
get ahead of ourselves. He hasn't had so far the year that we wanted. But the biggest thing about this Colts team, Matt, is the defense. Right now, they rank third in scoring, obviously, off of other offenses. First in yards allowed per game. And they have a high of 11 interceptions <laughs> on this season. So basically, I'm not saying the defense is what carries this team, but I would say the defense playing the way they're playing is a big reason why this Colts team is in the position they really are right now. And the biggest thing coming into this game, looking for a team that's ranked third in rush defense, going up against Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is the stop. If you stop Derrick Henry in this game, the Colts will have no problem winning this well, game well, whatsoever. That's well, that's what it comes down to. And again, uh, as I said, the storyline before this game even w was announced and when we first saw it going into it, I believe if you and I had a conversation, and I'm sure we did at some yeah, point about this specific game, if, if we were talking about what we thought would happen six months ago, five months ago when this you know was announced – we would probably say, similarly to the storyline that's going to be on the field today, if the Colts can stop the ball and, and yeah. Phillip Rivers can play at a high level and is able to start clicking. Again, like you said, he hasn't been great. Nah. Phillip Rivers has not been great. We're talking about a guy that's, again, he's thrown 10 touchdowns, but he's got seven picks seven as picks. well. Almost for, as many for, kids. For a, veteran, <laughs> for a veteran, right, who's been in the league as long as he has, this shows you Right, we saw it this week, and I go back to make the example because we saw it this week. Tom Brady looked like crap this week. Yeah, and we know oh, that everyone's awful. talking about it. Tom Brady sucks all of a sudden out of nowhere. Right, these teams at the top of their division, and all of a sudden their team sucks, and, and their season's over. That's the storyline. That's the storyline that that the, the media is telling you right now about Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. But again, I'm telling you, they'll be there in the end of the day, and don't fool yourself about that team. Now, this is kind of the same thing. Yeah. We're seeing a veteran quarterback in Tom Brady struggle a little bit here in the middle of the season against a tough opponent. Now, that's kind of what we've seen in Phillip Rivers, right? A veteran quarterback coming into a new system, having to kind of get these relationships, get these yep, connections. 100%. And again, Tom Brady's still got more connections to come. He's still got Antonio Brown that's going to be coming on the field this upcoming weekend, and we're talking about, that's again... more weapons, 100%. So, Phillip Rivers, in my opinion, gets a little bit of a pass here, a little bit of a pass moving forward, because... Tom Brady even struggles, right? The greatest of all time is even struggling because he's adapting to a new system. He's adapting to new weapons. And all of a sudden, I believe that Phillip Rivers is kind of adapting in the similar light here right. because, yes, he has struggled in his career. Yes, he has struggled specifically in the fourth quarter, especially in games right. where well, he has yeah. um, come down and make a play. But, frankly... I think it's hard for any quarterback, uh, especially up there in age, like Phillip Rivers is, like Tom Brady is. I think it's very hard to challenge yourself and, and adapt to a new scenario, a new situation, a new coaching staff. Whatever it is, we're seeing it here. But the storyline has to be they're still 5-3. and three. The storyline has to be that they the have everything still in front of them that they thought that they could have. And that's my point of everything right now. This game is kind of what we thought. As much as the Titans have overachieved and as much as the Colts may be have been steadily increasing their, their, their season. Going into this, we knew this game was going to mean something, and we knew this matchup specifically, once the news came out about Phillip Rivers, once the news came out about Tannehill going to be the court, we knew, really, this is going to come down to defense, right. and really this is going to come down to, like you said, stopping Derrick Henry. So the storyline is last week, a team was able to slow down Derrick Henry. I'm going to let you talk about yeah. this, but was able to slow down Derrick Henry what do you think the move is moving forward here, specifically for the Colts, and what you really got to do? Because, yes, we've seen Tannehill is a guy that can put up numbers. 19 touchdowns this year, three picks. 19 to three. Yeah. Again, talking about Phillip Rivers, 10 to seven. Big difference there. 100%. So is it over, like you said, if you stop the run today? Or do you really, you know, could, could Tannehill really go out there and beat you? Well, through the year. Well, Matt, don't get me wrong. I think Tannehill, obviously, you can't, those are facts. You can't not look at the facts and say, mm -hmm. okay, this guy could definitely get it done. But I think there's going to be a big loss. They don't have Humphreys, one wide receiver. So their main target today is going to be A.J. Brown. Don't get me wrong. A.J. Brown, <laughs> if you haven't seen him play, go watch him. He's like a mini DK Metcalf. The guy is an absolute bull machine. He can't be stopped. If you could stop A.J. Brown, and like you said, with Derrick Henry, he had a bad game last week against the Bears. And if anyone has seen the Bears, that's another team where their defense is really why they're in the position they're in. So this is a big game, obviously. Look at tape from last week. Derrick Henry, as much as he... There's no doubt in my mind, Matt, that Derrick Henry could go out there today and run for 200 yards. The guy is capable of doing it. But if the Colts really want to do something, as much as it comes from the defensive side, Phillip Rivers has to protect the football. And like you said, if Phillip Rivers... 
Like those stats, seven interceptions. That's not good enough whatsoever. You get T.Y. Well, Hilton back today. You got to make something happen offensively, and you have no problem beating this Tennessee Titans team. Well, that's kind of where I'm going now. I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about the fact that, yes, Derrick Henry can beat you you know, by running the football, but I almost think Derrick Henry's um, impact on the game comes more when they have to overcompensate for you, right? And they go out there and they have to play heavy run defense, and all of a sudden it opens up the capability, right, for you to do a, a play action pass, right. for you to do a little bubble screen, for you to get the ball down the field and push it. And like you said, A.J. Brown is a guy – that, that's that, that's, that's put yeah. up six touchdowns this year, six touchdown receptions. And and here's the stat that gets me about um, Brown. 31 receptions, right, for 457 yards, meaning every time he's catching the ball, it's over 10 yards. It's about 13 yards per catch on the season, 13 yards per reception. Again, that's, that's significant. That means you're getting the ball down the field. And, again, I'm giving the credit not only to Tannehill because, yes, He's thrown for almost 2,000 passing yards 100%. this season so far, yeah. and he does have 19 touchdowns. We got to talk about a guy that, again, got injured in Miami, and I was premature to say, I don't know if he's going to be the solution here. I think it's a temporary solution in Tennessee, and frankly, I was wrong about him. Yeah. I think this is a guy that we could see moving forward manage the game, and that's something we're seeing him do consistently. To have three picks and 19 touchdowns, that's extraordinary. And then you're talking about, again, the credit has to go to – the coaching staff, 100%. and it has to go to Derrick Henry because he forces the defense so much to worry about him, yeah. to not only stop him, close up all the gaps, and again, make sure that you're you're not letting the ball go down the field, and all of a sudden that it's opening up things significantly downfield for for guys like um, AJ Brown. But Dan, tonight I kind of am, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Tonight is going to be a matchup not only between the two defenses, but I believe the matchup is going to be Phillip Rivers against Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. And so far this season, Tannehill definitely has the upper hand. I believe, though, in this Colts team, and I believe in Phillip Rivers. We've seen it throughout his career. He's a guy that does put up numbers. He's a guy that is a leader in the rock, locker room, like I said earlier. And I believe today he is going to help will his team to a big victory. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So, right. Dan, give the pick vault projection here, score projection, and – We'll kind of talk about the pick vault actually just again. The application is coming out. And again, you, we kind of hinted at it earlier. It's coming out. And, and, and like I said, we do have big news moving forward. But now the pick vault is actually including uh, win probability and, and the odds and percentage to win based on artificial intelligence and based on um, internal data and stuff that we're working on to make sure the platform's at, at its highest level. So today, Dan, we're actually premiering um, and for the first time ever going to give not only the score projection, but we're also going to include in here uh, the pick vaults win percentage calculation. So, Dan, give both of those here, starting with the score projection. All right, Matt. So we got the Colts putting up 24.91 points today against the Titans, 22.85. So that is covering that Colts minus one spread. And then for the percent chance to win, the Colts coming in at a 52.18% chance to win to the Titans, 47.82% chance to win today. So like we've been harping, the pick vault's all about the Colts as well. Obviously, Phillip Rivers, like we said, Matt, and you kind of noted on it, that Phillip Rivers has brought his team. He puts up the numbers, but there's one thing about him, and that's the fourth quarter. Is that the reason he got out of San... Well, now LA, San Diego at the time, because his MO was... He can't win a ball game. And I think Indianapolis is a place where he can get that MO away from him. And this time, Matt, like you said, big win today from Phillip Rivers. Needs to happen well, through every quarter. That's the thing. Every quarter he needs to play well. So, so, so Phillip Rivers, like you said, has been a guy that has been known to blow ball games late, um, obviously late in the games. But one thing you got to talk about Phillip Rivers is as much as he's lost the games, he's also won a lot of games that maybe he shouldn't win. So, I, again, I think he gets a bad rap, and he is a future Hall of Famer. In my opinion, he's done a lot throughout his career, yeah. and frankly, I do like the attitude he brings on a daily basis, and that's why I'm giving them the edge, right? Because you're talking about a young team in Indianapolis, a young team that, again, is on the rise, and that you're playing against not only another team in the AFC, but a team in the AFC that did what you're looking to do this season. Right? You're looking to kind of shock the world well and, and, and make a, a big impact and move forward. In order to do that, you're going to have to beat the team that did it last year. right? Yeah. You're going to have to beat the team that's doing it again this year. right? Everyone was talking about how this team, you know, they, they get rid of Mariota. They get rid of um, a bunch of their weapons, and all of a sudden this team's doing it again. They signed Tannehill to a um, major deal. Like, this is their guy, they think at least. So all I'm saying is this Colts team has to make a statement tonight, and I believe they're going to do it, and that's going to be significant um, 
Going significantly for, yeah. uh, based on the fact that I believe Philip Rivers is going to have a big game, specifically in the fourth quarter. I believe we're seeing a late come from behind win here. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Um, I don't think either team's going to break the 30 mark. Obviously, the pickball projection, like you said, 24 to 22 or 24.91 to be exact and 22.85. But you're talking about a very competitive, very important ball game. Yeah. And I believe this is where the shift's going to begin. We are now on the second half of the season, right? We are now over the first half. We're over the hump. We're over the time where teams are kind of deciding who they are. We're now seeing competitive football, right? These teams are competing not only for tonight's game. Okay. But these teams are starting to compete not only for their division titles, but they're competing for wild card spots and other things down the stretch, and specifically in both these two divisions with these two teams in the AFC. Yeah. You're Tough talking AFC. about a very, very, very competitive football, and I think that kind of starts tonight, and that is why the pickball is projecting this game to be so close, so close, and I think you kind of stay away from points. I know a lot of other companies out there and a lot of um, – you know, other gambling consultation services and, and predictive media uh, uh, platforms out there are really going on the Colts minus one. But why? Um, why bother? It's a pick them. Just stick with the money line. I, I think I think the play is a stick with with uh, specifically with what we've seen throughout this year with missed field goals, uh, you know, missed opportunities, missed extra points, late turnovers, specifically when you're talking about a team like the Colts. You never right. know. I was going to say, and we just we're talking about it out of all people, Phillip Rivers. He can win by one. That one sometimes does come back to haunt a lot of people, Matt. I agree. Just and stick, if you do play look, and, and what I will say is if you do look at the Titans, and I think this goes back into the artificial intelligence that does build up these projections. These are not Dan's and I, you know, opinions, which is the best part about the pickball. But specifically, I believe the artificial intelligence kind of looks into the fact that this Titans team has been in a lot of close games. I mean, they've, 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 they've won three games by less than three points this season. That doesn't happen. I mean, when you're in close games, specifically in the NFL, specifically in very competitive football, it's hard to win those close games consistently, specifically yep. when you're within a touchdown. And then when you get within a field goal, you're talking about very flip-flop. It could go either way, right? So I believe today's a game where, again, it's going to flip the other way, right? Because they've won a lot of these close games. And, again, statistically speaking, you don't really win a lot of those games back to back to back to back. This would be the fourth in a row. Yeah. Um, within, a three point, within a three-point game, very tough to continue to win those types of ball games. And again, we've seen it, whether it's coaching. We've seen him do a lot of things down the stretch to, to, to keep them in ball games. And I believe today his luck's about to dry to out. Run out. I was going to say. About, I think this could be a very important and crucial game for the Titans. Right. I think if they lose this one, I mean, moving forward. I was going right? to say, Matt, you know what's interesting about that? I'm sure you were about to see it because I see you looking at the schedule there. But they actually meet back up with each other, I believe. I don't know if it's two weeks, but three weeks. They play each other again. So, yeah, as this game is huge. But that next game, I can't even imagine what the stakes are. That's going to be for, like that, like you're saying, that playoff push. Well, and they're in the same division in the AFC South. This is where I was going with it. I, I didn't know if this, this was the second. Like you said, this will be the first of two matchups yeah. between these two teams. But they're in the same division. Only one game separates them right now. Like I said, the, the Titans are 6-2. and two, The Colts are 5-3. and three. This would actually flip-flop who's in first place in the division because you're talking about all of a sudden head-to-head -head record. You beat them. You're now ahead of them. You have the okay. same record in that conference. So we're talking about the AFC South. It's going to be down to those two teams. And honestly, I'm going to say something. Both these teams know how important these two games are oh, against yeah. one another because they know they it. probably both will make a playoff spot, right? Right now, they're on track. You never know what could happen in the, in the second half of the season. You never know what could happen with injuries. But speaking, if you're going off of uh, probability and percentages, both these teams should make the playoffs and are on track to do so. Have the teams to do it, the coaching to do it. But when you're talking about a playoffs that could be extended based on COVID-19 and extended in other areas, we're talking about the importance of getting a bye, potentially. The importance of winning your division and having that home field advantage, um, even with or without fans, I think it does make it important that you're not traveling the same distance or, or, or going through the same process of not living at home and having to go on the road, stay in a hotel, travel there, uh, specifically with COVID-19 protocols, traveling's different. Traveling's oh. more you know difficult because maybe you don't want to expose yourself, so you guys have to actually go on a bus instead of, you know, whatever Team, it comes, yeah, whatever it comes down to, whatever it comes down to, this is a season where I think as much as home field advantage isn't as important, talking about having as many fans yeah. there, I believe it is important. Oh, it and is. We've seen it in the MLB specifically. Not having to travel does make a very, very, very significant, significant um, 
difference. Yeah, difference. and you were saying the fans, Matt. There are some even like now. There are some stadiums oh, with fans course. in them. And honestly, in the beginning of the season, I forget which game it was. I believe whoever was playing Jacksonville that first game. Everyone's all over. I don't know who they're playing, but against Jacksonville, everyone finds out they have fans there, and everyone's minds flip. Gardner Minshew balls out. So I agree with you. It definitely can make it, a difference. It absolutely makes a difference. And like I said, that just shows how important games like this are because these are the games that decides who's going to have home field advantage. And these are the games that decides who's who could have a bye moving forward in a playoff spot. And that's something we've seen. Think of the Titans didn't have to play the Patriots in the first round last year. And think about the Titans didn't have to go through the process. Maybe they were more rested when they did play the Chiefs later, right? They, these types of things do matter in the grand scheme of things. 100%. And don't fool yourself. These teams do not like each other. They're in the same division, and they do not like each other. Historically speaking, these teams have been competitive with one another, going back to the days of Peyton Manning um, and, and, and the great Throwback. dominance of, of the Colts, and even when it was Andrew Luck. I mean, we're now seeing a team – in the Colts, in my opinion, that consistently goes out there and gets the quarterback yeah. that is leveled up um, in the mind. And that's what I want to talk about. It's yeah. not necessarily about his skill on the field. It's about what's going on in his head and what's going on um, in, in the ability to change the ball game. So, Danny, last but not least, before we you know close this one out, give me a player prop Ooh. for tonight's ball game. I- and I have one for you, but I'll let you go first here. A player prop for tonight's ball game, and again, the pick vault is projecting a big win here for Phillip Rivers, a big win for this Colts team, and the pick vault play is the under as well, and the the Colts money line. Those are the two plays so far given out, Danny. Let's hear the pick vault play. All right. So basically, Matt, we got you. Only let me get one player prop. You can get only, two. All right. Okay, I'll players. give it two. All right. I'm gonna go one for each team, obviously. <laughs> First, I'm going to go Jonathan Taylor out of Wisconsin, running back for the Colts. There's no Marlon Mack, obviously. He's been out for the whole season, and he splits rips with Hines. So Jonathan Taylor plus 135, and then obviously we hyped him up before. I don't know if I'm taking this from you, but my guy A.J. Brown plus 110. Like we said before, the guy's an absolute dog. He will get in the end zone tonight if the Titans want to even keep this one close. So those are my player props, Matt. What you got? What you got? So so I actually have two player props as well. I was going to actually go with the A.J. Brown pick, so I'm happy you took it because I'll give two different ones. I was up in the air about it. I'm going to go with Phillip Rivers over 265.5 passing yards. I think we're talking about a big day. Yes, we've seen uh, the ability from the defense of, of this Titans team to be able to stop the run. And I think that's going to open up things just as it, just as it does when they have to stop Derrick Henry. I believe you force Phillip Rivers to throw the ball down the field and this guy in this time after giving him more time to understand a new system and really keep moving forward, I think a big day from Phillip Rivers. And that's why my second play uh, is also Phillip Rivers over one and a half touchdown passes. Now that's at 152 and the last one, which was over 265 yards, that minus 112. Good value there on both of them. And again, I do believe the Colts get a big win today and a big statement in the AFC South and a big win moving forward that could form what could be going down in the AFC playoff picture, specifically what's going to happen with the bigger names in, in, this, in this conference, like the Bills, like the Dolphins, like the Steelers, like the Ravens, Ravens like the, like oh the Chiefs, God. like the, Ra- the Raiders. Again, you're talking about a lot of teams here that are going to be in That's the hunt, and, and you have to throw in there the Colts and the Titans because they're very, very competitive. So tonight's going to be a very interesting matchup. Again, I'm very excited to watch it, and I know Pig Vault Nation is as well. So go on our story, by the way. I'm going to say it now on air. Go on our story and vote um, or say who you believe will win tonight. Uh, obviously, we're talking about the two teams we've been talking about this whole podcast, the Titans behind Tannehill um, or the Colts behind Rivers. Who's got the edge tonight? Who are you rolling with, Payball Nation? We'll put that up on the story. Get your vote in. Go watch this game. Enjoy it. And, Danny, I believe we are. O-U-T out. You've been listening to the Pick Vault. America's premier sports gambling consultation firm, Matt Taylor and Danny Siv, are ready to make you a winner and unlock your money. Make sure to hit the website at www.thepickvault.com. Find the app and subscribe to receive exclusive member content, including our picks, live updates, and sports news. Follow on Twitter and Instagram at The Pick Vault, taking sports gambling to the next level. 
Until next time, this is the Pick Vault signing off. This is the Pick Vault. Gonna sit you down and listen to this real talk. Ain't no first or second option, this the default. Turning picks into these dollars, gonna let them fall. Raining down these daily winnings like an aerosol. Analytics calculated just to win it all. Problems when it comes to choosing, we got all them solved. Got the picks that need and fixed, and you know who to call. Cause this the, cause this the, cause this the pick vault.